Okay, uh, welcome back to our last section for Wisdom Bridge. Okay, we are now going to talk about uh, the topic is on sensitivity of Wisdom Bridge. So, we talked about uh, Wisdom Bridge under balance condition in our previous uh, uh, lecture video. Okay, so now when the bridge is under unbalanced condition, okay, that is when there is current flow through the galvanometer okay, which will cause the deflection of the pointer this is a galvanometer okay. when there is a current flowing through few milliamps or few microamps depending on the voltage of from at b and d so you can see that the bridge is no more under balance condition okay all right so the amount of deflection is a function of sensitivity okay when we talk about the sensitivity of the galvanometer okay so sensitivity here can be presented as what you call deflection per unit current. Okay, it means that a more sensitive galvanometer deflects by a greater amount for the same current. So if that's the first, if the galvanometer is very sensitive, then for a small amount current of Ig, then the galvanometer will deflect to a very large value. Okay, that was what it tells you about. So total deflection of a uh, wisdom bridge or galvanometer in wisdom bridge may be expressed in a linear or angular measurement such as millimeter, degrees or radians. Okay? So that's because of that we can define the sensitivity as deflection per unit current. So whether it's in millimeter, in degrees or radians, when you divide by per unit current then we can call it as a sensitivity. Okay? For example in smart. So S, as a symbol for sensitivity, is equal to total deflection divided by unit current. So I view I given in millimeter, in degrees, or in radians, then it depends, it doesn't matter. But the bottom here should be what you call the unit current in microamp. Okay. So you follow that the deflection is you can for this, you can calculate the what how much deflection of the governor meter is by simply multiplying the sensitivity of the meter multiplied by the galvanometer current okay all right so this is sensitivity i is the galvanometer current okay so to determine the amount of deflection that will result for a particular degree of unbalance we can use what they call a thevenin's theorem okay so our objective here is to find the current through galvanometer how much current that flow through galvanometer during unbalanced condition so the strategy is to find the Thevenin equivalent circuit, the Thevenin equivalent circuit, okay, for the bridge as seen by the galvanometer, and use it to find the deflection current in the galvanometer, which is caused by unbalanced bridge. Okay, so how to do that? So uh, to determine the amount of deflection that will result for a particular degree of unbalance, the following steps are taken. This is just a summary. So basically, as you can see on the right side here, this is a picture when the galvanometer is removed okay then actually you want to find what is the Thevenin equivalent when you talk about Thevenin equivalent basically you are talking about finding the Thevenin voltage and Thevenin resistance okay so the first step is to find the Thevenin voltage okay this voltage here and then after that you want to find the equivalent Thevenin resistance by removing the galvanometer and short circuiting the voltage source okay so this is a voltage source you want to find the r -tabunin. and then finally you are going to use both information obtained in step 1 and in step 2 to find the deflection current of galvanometer due to ambulance condition okay. so here it is so how to do that so step 1 how to find the equivalent voltage so the Thevenin equivalent voltage is found by removing the galvanometer from the bridge circuit and compute the open circuit voltage between the terminal A and B Terminal in this case is terminal A and B is the terminal between the galvanometer here. It used to be here, but since we removed it, then we want to find what is the voltage between A and B, and that is our Thevenin voltage here. Okay, let's say if I this is a wisdom bridge, so I, if I redraw it again, okay, if I straighten up all the lines here, I will get this this kind of figure. Lah. This is R1, R2, R3, R4, and the the voltage between A and B between here and here is what we call the Thevenin voltage. 
So after we remove the galvanometer, we apply the voltage divided equation, which is the voltage at point A as follow. Okay, this is a voltage equation for voltage at point A. Okay, if we take the ground here or maybe the bottom here as a ground reference, so voltage at point A or VA is simply R3 divided by R1 plus R3 multiplied by the total voltage. Basically, you are looking only at this portion of the circuit. Okay, so if you look only at this portion of the circuit, then the voltage v VA is the voltage A to ground between here to ground. Okay, and then it's, it can be calculated using this formula. Similarly, you can calculate, uh, you can come up with the expression for voltage at point B. Point B here is simply the voltage divider at this branch of the circuit. Okay, alright. So, you know the total voltage is V multiplied by the ratio of the R6 R4 here divided by R2 plus R4. By R4, because VB here is voltage B to ground. And this is the ground. And then finally, the terminal voltage is simply VAB or basically the magnitude with the, the difference between voltage A minus voltage B or voltage, voltage B minus voltage A. Depends. Sometimes voltage at point A can be greater than B or B greater than A. Doesn't matter. The most important thing is you want to find what's the difference. We take the modulus or the, the, the magnitude only. Okay. So, and finally, okay. Finally, if you uh, insert these two equation into the bottom here, and then you can you can uh, find that the Thevenin equivalence voltage is just simply V voltage, the total voltage, the source voltage multiplied by these two ratio of resistance. Okay, so that's that's it. All right, that's how to find that's the step how to find the Thevenin voltage. Okay, step number two. Now you want to find the Thevenin resistance. So similarly, okay, first you need to remove the galvanometer and replace the battery. This is very important. Replace the battery with a short circuit. Okay, since the voltage source, you need to short the battery. So and then after that, you rearrange the circuit to simplify you to find the equivalent circuit or equivalent, basically equivalent resistance okay, between the terminal A and B. Okay, it's simply like this. Okay, before this, remember you have a voltage source over here, right? So first, okay, first you remove the galvanometer. Now it's gone. Okay. Now and then after that, you short the voltage source. Okay. So you have only resistors and wire. And then don't don't forget about this terminal. Eh? This terminal A and B. Okay. All right. And then after that, you bring the wire together. See, you can see that this 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 wire here, this uh, line here, you can bring them in the middle. It doesn't matter, right? It doesn't change. Okay, if you look at here, you have basically three nodes, right? Node number one, node number two, node number three, node number four, right? It, so it doesn't matter, you can bring the wire. So for easy visualization, you just put the wire in the middle. And then after that, you bring the terminal A and B out outwards. So the terminal just this wire here, right? So this wire here, you bring outwards. Okay, keep the wire in the middle, all right? And then after that, you straighten all the wire lines. Okay. Actually, you want to find the resistance between point A and point B. Okay, so why I do this is just because you want to make you uh, it's easier for you to 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 know which one is um, how to calculate the uh, equivalent resistance later on. Okay, so after you straighten the wire, then you can see. Okay, I think you can see now. Okay, which one? Uh, how to uh, find out to find the total resistance for this between A and B. Okay. If you further split this, this resistor into two, see so basically this middle wire here, you can split into this because it doesn't change the, the, the topology of the circuit. So basically you can see that this R1 and R3 is in, is in parallel to each other. And R2 and R4 is in parallel to each other. And then this combination here in, in series to each other. Okay. So then you can find the total resistance between A and B. Okay. Just as follow. Okay. So, you can make it calculate the alternating is just simply R1 in parallel with R3 plus R3 in parallel with R4 and that is your Thevenin resistance. Okay, very simple, very easy. Okay, so uh, and then the last step is to find the deflection current due to the galvanometer. So basically, 
Uh, you know that magnitude of current is limited by the Thevenin equivalent resistance and any resistance connected between A and B. So, since the resistance between A and B consists of on, only galvanometer resistance Rg, right? Remember, this G here is there is also the internal resistance Rg. Or previously we call it Rm, right? So Rg. So finally, if you want to find the galvanometer current, it's just the voltage Thevenin that calculated in step one divided by the uh, the total of Thevenin resistance plus the internal resistance of the generator. So this one you calculated earlier. This one is basically a fixed value depending on the size of the galvanometer. Okay, so these are all the, the, the meaning of each of the parameter. Okay, so we are going to continue next our video on some example on this section. See you back then.